Hey, I'm Caleb from You Can Make This Too. Today we're going to be talking about how to saw a straight line and I actually already recorded this video and then decided it would probably be more interesting if instead of me just talking to you, I teach my wife who I don't think has ever used a handsaw how to saw a straight line just to prove that just because I've done this, you know, like 15 or 20 times isn't why I can saw straight, but if you just apply the principles, you can be cutting straight in no time at all. So have you ever used a handsaw no. that you know of? No. Even like not maybe? I, I mean, no. <laughs> okay, cool. So first we're gonna have her make a cut just to laugh at how bad it is and then we'll walk her through how to do it. Um, first thing we're gonna do is of course, is it's always easier to saw if you use the line. I'm gonna be using this saddle square from Izzy Swan. It's one of his like products from a while ago they don't make anymore that I seldom ever use. But if you're gonna do three sides of a line, this is way faster than using a T-square and then making a mark, mark, mark. So I'm gonna use this, but it's totally unnecessary. It's just since we're gonna be doing this a lot, it's really fast. Okay, cut one, zero coaching. That was actually really good, but we see the typical problem is everyone can start pretty square, but you get drift. And also, we'll notice she wasn't pretty square because on the back side, to focus, it looks like she actually tracked the line really well on this side, but on this side, not so much. So we can fix that. We can have her cutting on the line in no time. But just since we talked about it, try to saw it here and you'll immediately see what I was talking about. Ready? Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, that's a lot different. That's not good, is it? Like, like, <laughs> right. like. Yeah, that's why you want to keep close to your support. Because it's easy to understand once it's out here it has. Tip one would be, don't blame your tools unless you have bad tools. Fortunately, these are all in good shape, but if no matter what you do, your results are always garbage, you know, just make sure your saw's straight and no teeth are messed up. Because if your blade's all messed up, you're just gonna struggle. So yeah, your body position was really good, you're to the side. Because if you're standing in front of this trying to cut, you know, figure with your shoulder and your elbow is like having to work really strange to move straight. But if you get your body out of the way of your arm, your shoulder and elbow can move in a straight line really easy. So you're standing to the side of it, which is nice. Next thing is just making sure you actually start on the line. A good way to do that is to use your thumb. Just set your thumb there, bump it against your thumb. But the trick is you don't want to be down like this because then you'll cut your thumb. So you want to make sure that the meat of your thumb you're actually resting against is up high. And that just helps you steer. Make sure your saw starts on the line. And a bad habit a lot of us got from our dads is to start a cut by pushing, but all you do is actually mangle the fibers of the wood. You didn't do that because no one taught you wrong. <laughs> Someone might have taught you wrong. Don't ever start with a push cut because you're not cutting. All you're doing is mangling the fibers and when you try to cut, they're gonna try to pull your saw where it doesn't wanna go. So you start with a good cut. The next thing is you don't wanna saw straight across. It's really hard to get a good successful cut. I'm gonna cut at a nice angle so you're cutting it on two lines at the same time. Also, another, you were like way back here on the saw, which is a little harder, just like a chef knife, you have a lot more control the closer you are with the blade, making sure that it's kind of in line with your arm. You can see that I don't want the saw like this or like this if I'm straight. The blade just in line with my arm because that's gonna work with the motion better. And the next thing is to make sure I'm actually square and plumb. So obviously if I'm sideways to the wood, bad. If I'm twisted, bad but you're not gonna be that bad. You might just be a tiny bit bad. The trick to knowing if you're square or not is actually, which is why you wanna be at the side, is if you look at the side of the blade, you can see the reflection of the wood. If it looks like the wood goes straight through the blade and connects with the other side, you're square. If we turn it, 
You see how that, that line moves? Yeah. See how it lines up perfectly? If mm -hmm. it's lined up perfectly, you're square. Any, any direction you go, if you mess up, so you just keep it square, and you're sawing square. So make sure you keep your angle, use your thumb as long as you need to, keep that lined up. Because I actually don't watch this line when I start. I just watch the reflection and try to keep that reflection square. And because that line's square, if my saw is square, it's going to follow the line. The other thing to make a point of, I think, is that it's your first little bit, that first half inch to inch that you cut, is the most critical. Because this blade's pretty thick, right? But how much of it cuts? Just a tiny bit. So once you get started in the cut, the cut you've already made is going to track your blade. So we've got her set with a new cut. She's going to apply the principles I just showed her and I'll correct her as she goes. Do this two or three times and I think, I think they're going to be great. So it's just me and the whole world watching. No pressure. No pressure. All right, you want to put your thumb on the top of the wood. That way it's steady. Yep. I was making sure I was on the line first. Okay. <laughs> it's critical. I'm afraid to have my thumb there. <laughs> Do I need my thumb there still? If you feel it's established, you're, you're fine. I would say you're flattening a lot and try to keep more okay. of an angle. Because then you can use your elbow too. You were just using your shoulder, not your elbow. Like get that whole cut. <laughs> it's not about strength. It's about finesse. Very nice. So, vertically, you tracked much better. You went from right on the line to right beside the line. Um, the only other thing, though, is across the top, you weren't quite square, a square across the top. You can see we're on the line, but here you cut to that side of the line, and then the blade actually tracked over. You can see we still have that. Mm -hmm. I would say much better than the first cut. Not perfect yet, but. Here's the off cut. This was the far side, so not the side she was looking at. You can see it wasn't quite square, but pretty close. For comparison, here was the first piece. You can see how off she was on the first one, then how off she was on the second one. at the near side yet this is the far side see she was right on the line there's just a little bit of the pencil line here none of the line there so that was really straight kind of bowed out just a little bit maybe not even discernible on this side I see zero pencil see the near side no pencil line on this so on her side she perfectly split the pencil line and on the far side there was just a tiny bit visible so we'll do the other check that feels really good. Check the other side. And yeah, that's, you feel it. I did that. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> right? First cut, dang good for beginners. Second cut was like, oh, oh okay, okay. Second cut after instruction, no, like, a, like a pro. <laughs> Can you do it again? Let's do it again. Yeah, if, after you've done it perfect, now it's like, oh, I can't mess it up. Can I repeat it? Can you repeat it? You, I know you can. Third cut after instruction, fourth cut overall. Her second cut was perfect. Can she repeat perfection? No, I'm off. <laughs> I can already tell I'm off. Okay. So we didn't repeat it again. Pretty. <laughs> ah, it's all part of it. 
pretty ob obvious we came off the line pretty far. Yeah, I definitely got stuck, and I was like, uh... Yeah. Were you pushing down? Did you feel like you were pushing into the saw? Hmm, yeah, something? probably. Okay, does it seem, because like, those just from your grip, I think you're just working on just, I should, I should mention that, yeah. Maybe that's what happened with my last... We've had a couple, not so great. I think we identified what it was, just something I should have mentioned, is in all the pressure, she really wanted to hit that line. And so she was trying to push the saw into that line. You don't ever want to focus on pushing your saw into the wood, the teeth do the cut. You just work on drawing the saw the direction it needs to go, not forcing it into the wood, let the teeth do the work. Because as soon as you apply that pressure, that blade is gonna to want to deflect. When that blade deflects, you're gonna lose the cut. So just focus on the stroke. And I noticed when you first start, you tend to do really short strokes, and I could tell from the pressure. I think that's what you were pushing, but try, try to get, when, whenever you take that stroke, if you start it good, just commit to it. Full strokes. Got it. <laughs> Noted. That's normally my job. <laughs> that felt better. Felt, looked a lot better, sounded better. A little bit. Yeah, you angled in this time, so you overcompensated some. <laughs> so yeah, before you were always over-rotating and cutting this way, that time you went the other direction. So we took a second, kind of just went over everything again and started and she just did like one more eh, and then just crushed it like three in a row. We got two left, so then you keep crushing it. Is, did it was did it ever feel like it clicked where you're like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's not to say I won't screw it up again. But well, no, yes. I still screwed up. <laughs> Good, yeah, so the first perfect one, a little bit of beginner's luck after doing like, what have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one or two of those was being so like seven cuts and you're like, oh, okay. Well, let's find out. Also, another thing that I think made a difference and helped is after we marked it before we'd had it flushed, but then I remember, oh, she doesn't really have any grip for that other hand, which helps keep you tracking and stable. So we raised it in the vise, and I think that might be making a little bit of a difference. Yes, yeah, very important is if you're not comfortable with your, because getting a good cut is all about body position. So if you're not comfortable, you're gonna really struggle to do it. I mean. The more you do it, the better you get. You can saw straight in less comfortable, awkward positions, but especially if you're learning, the more comfortable you are, the better your chance for success. about 10 cuts in and she's doing extraordinarily consistent, very close to staying on the line. Nothing that if I had a shooting board, but I don't really work with, if I'm using hand tools and normally cutting joinery, I'm not just cutting things to length and then need them to butt up. So if you were doing that, you'd have a shooting board and use a plane to shoot everything perfect. She hasn't cut anything that two swipes on a shooting board isn't going to bring into just perfect squareness. With that said, it wouldn't be fair if we weren't unfair and then didn't just like completely change everything by saying, okay, instead of making a two inch cut, you're gonna make like a five or six inch cut. Instead of using the saw, you're gonna use a completely different saw and just apply the same principles and see how things go. So yeah, because the fundamentals are all the same. This is still is a Ryoba. So it's ripping teeth on one side, cross cut teeth on another, but you can probably notice that it has much larger teeth spaced farther apart. So it's much more aggressive, cuts a lot faster. This is really more of a dovetail saw. It's for doing really small, fine precision cuts. This is for rougher, faster cuts. So see what happens. <laughs>
How's it look? I mean, pretty good. Grab the big square. Check it. It'd be easier to check on the other side. The bow's going to fight you there. Right. The other thing we threw is you can see that this board is bowed, but let's see, flush. Maybe a sixteenth. So yeah, like I would I would call that acceptable on that. What do you think? Not bad. How you feel? Pretty good. Pretty proud? <laughs> yep. Yeah, in 30 minutes you've done like a dozen cuts. Your third one was perfect. We had some bad ones, but um, I sprung this on you this morning, so how do you feel about it? Did it meet your expectations? Do you think you'd be cutting straight this quick? No. <laughs> I hope Did that you... would have some beginner's luck, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think so. No. So for someone who says, yeah, it must be cool to have great hand tool schools. If I'd been doing this for a decade, then I could cut a straight line too. What do you want to say to people who are intimidated to like get a $20 saw and try to use that to do woodworking? Uh, it's perfectly fine <laughs> <laughs> and you you can make this too <laughs> ah, good play. so yeah anyway there you go um yeah proof is in the pudding she, seriously like she's never hand sawed before mm -hmm. if, if you had you totally forgot and it probably was forever i've ago, never done it never I, I turn fabric there. into clothes I, sure sure yes yeah, she's a seamstress if it's not scissors a serger or sewing machine so yeah, definitely don't be intimidated if you want to add some hand tools to your woodworking, especially hand saws, which is great if you want to get into some joinery. It's a lot easier than it seems. Just follow the steps we went through, which the big thing is make sure your body, and all these principles apply for Western saws as well. Just instead of cutting on the pull stroke, you're cutting on the push stroke. They want to keep your body out of the way. Use your thumb to make sure you're square. Don't push into the wood. Just push in the direction of the cut and also make sure you use the angle. You don't want to try to work right across. If you're using a Western saw, you might start on the far side because you're pushing down instead of like trying to push up. That might be awkward. Whereas a Japanese saw, you know, you'd start on this corner. Use that angle to get established. Don't try to chop into the wood with a saw. Just go with the direction of the cut. And um, be very, very, very careful for that first, you know, three quarters of an inch, first inch, because that's going to establish the baseline for the rest of your cut. Because after that, the saw is just tracking in its own kerf because you saw that right mm -hmm. like if you mess up one of those first five strokes it's just it's done you may as well just cut <laughs> off the rest and start over yeah. Yeah, it's it's gone but if those but the thing is to cut a six inch board straight you don't have to cut a six inch board straight if you can cut one inch straight you can cut any board straight so it's just get that first inch and then the rest is going to be golden after that so anyway i hope you learned something were inspired or at least entertained and until next time make time to make something Maybe with a handsaw. So it kind of makes you feel like a badass. <laughs> like a real woodworker. Real woodworker. <laughs> you want to know how I normally cut things straight? Yeah. Perfectly, every time. <laughs> Get the square. Perfect.